I just murdered Floyd Cooper. And I'm giving myself up. Is this the gun? All right, what's your name? Howard Truth. Washington correspondent of the New York Press. When did you kill him? About 45 minutes ago. All right, go ahead. Give me the details. You've got all the details now you'll ever get. All right, Sergeant. Yes, I got the gun he did it with. Oh, pardon me. Thank you. He says his name is Robert Mackay from South America. He said he killed him about 35 minutes ago. What's that, Commissioner? Another one is confirmed. Robert Mackay of London and South America. All right, Commissioner, I'm coming downtown. Well, what do you know about that, boy? What's happened? Well, the Commissioner said that there's another... Who's this? He just confessed, and he has the gun. What's your name? Sergei Krenvitz. And why did you kill him? That's my affair. I came all the way from Manchuria to do it, not to talk about it. Through this case, it is not just that all three men pay the penalty. Stop. Urge leniency. Federation of Women's Club. Federation of the Society of that. Telegrams by the hundreds, newspapers screaming headlines. That's why I called you gentlemen here tonight. 
We have only a short time in which to make a decision. <coughs> Peters, can't you find a way out of this? Who, me? You prosecuted them? As far as I'm concerned, at heart, they're all equally guilty. A conspiracy to murder, and then a conspiracy of silence. Yes. Connor, what has the Attorney General's office decided? Well, the matter's entirely in your hands, Governor. You can let all three of them die, or save all three of them, or one or two of them. That's the tragic part of it, leaving it to me. You know I can't pardon all three because one is really guilty. Sometime between now and daylight, I must save two men from an unjust death. That sounds like a reflection on me. Professor, why don't you say something? Nobody asked me. But what did your investigation disclose? A lot of things. There's no positive proof. What do you call positive proof? They all admitted killing him. But one of those bullets must have come first. That's something to interest Barney. He's got a monopoly on brain. What about it, Barney? Professor Varney, will you honor us with your attention? <laughs> Varney's doing brain work. When it comes to brain work, it's better to keep your fingers busy instead of your wind. Now, gentlemen, please. Varney, can't you determine the order of the firing? I mean, which one of those bullets was the first to strike Cooper? No. We have fitted them into the respective gun, and we know where each man shot. Mackay into the heart, our troop into the head, Friendlich into the spine. Any one of them instantly fatal. But there's no way of telling which was first? No. The first bullet was the fatal bullet, and the moment life passed, the other two were shot into a corpse, which is just the same as shooting into a wall, as far as the law is concerned. And I don't see how the jury convicted all of them. I resent that, Barney. The jury convicted them because they admitted they were all attempting to kill Cooper. How can you attempt to kill a man who is already dead? What do you think, Connor? Well, I think the Kai, Trude, and Krenwitz were like soldiers in the firing squad, who don't know, even at the end, who actually fired the fatal shot. <laughs> There's a difference here. There's one man who does know. They're getting insistent, sir. Did you tell them that I won't make any statement? I have already told them, sir. Then they'll have to wait. I agree with Professor Varney. I still think he's wrong. Then you believe, Professor, that these three men on the verge of death may be induced to tell their stories, particularly when they know it means a pardon for two of them. Yes. I have every confidence in Professor Varney's scientific apparatus in recording the pulse beat during the period the brain is concealing the truth. And you think you can get the truth? If they speak at all, it will be impossible not to get the truth. And then if you assign these two pardons in blank, Governor, and give them to Professor Varney to fill in at Sing Sing, you'll be doing all that's humanly possible in the interest of justice. Very good scotch. What about a drink, Trude? No, thanks. How about you, Krenvitz? No, thanks. I'm too busy drawing my life's work. May not get a chance again. 
Oh. In that case... Gentlemen, I give you the state of New York that gives us everything. A chance to be together for the last night. Good liquor. No glasses to cut ourselves with. In fact, everything except matches. Oh, Shanahan. Give me a light, will you? There you are, Mr. Krenwicks. Krenwicks. I'll try to remember it. And if you don't get it by morning, forget it. It won't be necessary. Good evening, Warden. Good evening, Shanahan. Open the cell. Let me go first. It's possible you may not go at all. Am I going to be reprieved? Not exactly. This is Professor Varney, representing the governor. Dictograph. So that's the reason you put three of us together tonight. Well, you didn't learn a thing. You're mistaken, Mackay. There was no dictograph. Three men clever enough to command affairs in all parts of the world would hardly fall for a dictograph. Professor Varney is bringing you pardons from the governor. As you see, gentlemen, there are only two pardons. What names are on them? The pardons are blank. You will, in a sense, decide for yourselves which two names I will fill in, gentlemen. Well, that's a bit thick, wanting us to welch at the last minute. It hardly sounds like an invitation to a gentleman. I feel justified for the murder of Cooper, and I'm willing to get it over with. Fill in their names. Is that agreeable to you, Mackay? No. What about you, Quinvitz? No. Why should the three of you be fools enough to die for Floyd Cooper when two of you can go free? I killed Floyd Cooper. I know I killed him. You may have shot him, but I killed him. You were both mistaken. One of you killed Cooper. The other two shot into a corpse. Was it true through the head? A kai through the spine? Or Krenvitz into the heart? Whichever one of you it was who really killed Cooper knows the truth and he's hiding behind the other two. One of you shot first and he's hoping the state won't send three men to death. But he's wrong. Unless you tell me the circumstances of this killing, I will be unable to fill in the names on the part. And you will all three go to death. Certainly, two of you are fools, when you can go free tonight. I've never thought of it that way before. So, you decided not to be a fool, eh? Yes. How about you, Quinby? If this has suddenly become a life and death contest, count me in. What about you, Mackay? Very well. Very well. Then, suppose I begin with you. The instrument is ready, Mackay. As you talk, your words and your impulses with relation to them, true or false, will be recorded on the record. I will have nothing to do with deciding whether your name goes on a pardon. The instrument will set you free or send you to death.
My correct name is Robert Mackay. I'm an Englishman, formerly a surgeon in the army. I went out from London last year in charge of a coffee plantation in South America. My wife went along with me. She was an American girl. We had a charming home. And in spite of living on the borderline between two warring republics, my wife was completely happy. I'd heard of Floyd Cooper as a famous war correspondent when I was in the army. But I'd never met him. One afternoon, my wife and I were having tea in the garden. Signora? Oh, thank you. Anne, darling. Anne, darling. Horsey, horsey. Tea for a change, Robert. Sounds disloyal, Anne, when coffee's our business. We're getting a better grade with every planting. My assistant manager sent me this experimental bush. It's going to do wonders. Increase the size of the bean and alter its shape entirely. Diane, you're not listening. Oh, uh, yes, I was. Something about a, a bean. There's nothing to worry about, dear. We're in a neutral zone, and as long as we mind our own business, nothing can happen to us. Are we going home this year, Robert? I'm sorry, Anne. But next year we might get to London and New York. That is, if the company approves my new plan. I'll have to spend a couple of days in the interior. And leave me alone again? Well, it's quite safe here. Who cares about safety? Darling, you've completely ruined it. I'm sorry, Bob. I'm uh, sorry to have dropped in like this. I'm Floyd Cooper of the New York Press. Not Floyd Harding Cooper. <laughs> Well, I'm beginning to doubt it myself, getting in the line of fire like an amateur. I say, old man, you've been hit. And oh. my kit and some brandy, quick. I dropped into the right place. I'm Robert Mackay. I used to be a surgeon. This is my wife. Charm. How do you do? I'll have this out in a minute. I say, there's another wound here. An old one. Yes. Belgium. Dinmont dressing tent. I used to be a Dinmont. Ah, well, perhaps this is your work. <laughs> I should have remembered the most famous war correspondent of our generation. Oh. Perhaps it was Dr. Butcher at that time. I don't know. There were lots of butchers at that time. Thanks. You'll have to stay here for a few days. Yes, you must. Well, if I wouldn't be in the way. Oh, nonsense. Your visit will do us a lot of good.
Senor. Thank you. Don't get up. Oh, Anne. Oh, Anne. Your parrot speaks for me. And darling. And darling. And he knows values. Are you comfortable? Well, great job. Never was patched up better in my life. Where's Mr. McCoy? Still up the river. Looking for better coffee. That's life, dear lady. We're all looking for something. In my case, it's bigger and better wars. In mine? Well, I'm afraid my little article on plantation life bored you. Mm, on the contrary, it's splendid. It should be published. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Not Mr. Cooper. Floyd. From a fellow craftsman. And... Lovely place you have here. You should be very happy. What makes you think I'm not? Well, why should a woman like you, young and beautiful, be happy in a steaming jungle like this till she's old and faded? Unless, of course, she's tremendously in love. Which I am. Desperately. Tremendously. Well, in that case... In that case, try to go to sleep. I'll try. But if I can't, may I call like your palace? Anne, darling. Anne, darling. That's not a parrot. It's a McCall. Good night. Good night. Good night. And... If anything all right? Don't worry. I'll get a cable through somehow. The money is hot for the deal. You start moving the stuff tonight. I'll get word through in code. Darling, I've got great news for you. I've crossed another shrub. Now, what do you think of that? Looks nice. How's Cooper? Fine. Where is he? Oh, around somewhere. Look, Bob. He's mm. autographed one of his books for us. To Anne and Robert Mackay. Lloyd Harding Cooper. Makes us quite famous, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Anne. Hello. Feeling better, Cooper? I have to feel better, because I must get these dispatches through to the cable office. War is war. Will there be war? Confidentially, I'm afraid so. This grand shark warfare is nearing a climax. And General, the dispatches must go through. But you're in no condition to travel two days to the port. I can't help that. I positively forbid it. I've got to go to the port myself to cable the company. Let me have the dispatches. That's kind of you. To go collect. The newspaper code, of course. Makes me feel quite important. <laughs> oh, not at all. I'm merely an observer. It's men like Mackie who do the really big things. Do you really think so? Has he been telling you about my new shrubs? Well, we've spent uh, quite a lot of time talking about your new shrubs. It looks great. Coffee's the greatest thing in the world. My wife's an American, brought up on coffee and drinks tea. Very disloyal. But you're English, brought up on tea, and you drink coffee. I live coffee. Don't you worry about these dispatches. You just stay around till you get better. You know, your visit is doing us a lot of good. I've never seen Anne looking better. In that case, I shall have to get myself shot again sometime when I'm passing by. But Anne's happiness I'd shoot you myself. <laughs> <laughs> a privilege and a pleasure, Mrs. McKay. I thought you were a confirmed woman, Haven. Maybe it's like changing from tea to coffee. This country does strange things to you.
Deténgase del telegrama. Señor, you're under arrest. Senor Mahai, you are very fortunate. Our investigation shows that you have no part in the plans of this Pi Cooper. He has been using your plantation as a loading ground for munitions against our country. His business is traffic in life and death for money. I didn't know, General. You are to return to England. We have just received a cable from your company dismissing your services for violation of neutrality. I regret it, Senor, but I think it is for the best. Thank you, Jim. Where's Mrs. Mackay? She gone. Hmm? Where's Cooper? Both go. Boat. Sam, darling. Coffee. Coffee. I devoted myself to following him. At last I read he was in New York, preparing to sail for Europe with new honors in his profession. I hurried to his house. I entered through the French windows to his study. He was seated in a chair facing me. He did not move. I demanded to know what had become of my wife. Suddenly Cooper raised his gun and pointed it at me and I fired and killed him. Then I gave myself up. If I had known Mackay's story, I could have given him information regarding his wife. The first time I met Cooper was in Shanghai, where there was a woman who called herself Ann Cooper. What became of her? I don't know. She was not with him when I encountered him again in Manchuria, where I was a military attaché at the palace of Chang Fu, the warlord. I was deeply in love with Miss Sin Fa, a beautiful girl of Western education. Lord Chang is favorably disposed to you. Yes, I mustn't fail in my mission. It is written, he who goes in fear walks in the dark. Greetings to the illustrious Lord Chang Fu. May the bright sun of your presence continue long to light the world. I am but the moon reflecting the sun of your presence. Have you examined the prisoner? He wishes to see your highness. Bring him in. If you would excuse me for a moment. This is an injustice, Lord Chang. I have a war correspondent. 
I was robbed of my credentials by bandits while I was on my way to join your forces. I have information. You are not what you say. But I am. My credentials were stolen. I know him. Sir Kremwitz. I met him once when I was in Shanghai. He can vouch for me. Do you know him for what he says? Don't you remember, old man? Cooper. Floyd Harding Cooper of the New York Press. Yes, I remember you. If this is truly Mr. Cooper, I think he can identify himself through me. When I was a student in an American college, Floyd Cooper delivered a lecture. At Vassar. I spoke about the life of a war correspondent and related some of my personal experiences. I remember. The girls at the college spoke of nothing else for days after your visit. It is as he says, Lord Chang. Let him go. Thanks for remembering. Oh, Cooper! You'll need some money until your credits arrive. That's awfully decent of you. Thanks. That's an honor of your new appointment. Oh, it's only the beginning. But you must be careful. Lord Chang does not see through our Western eyes. Who is it? Just a fellow who's come to pay a debt. <laughs> no, no Chinese custom. Thank you, Fenwick. Greetings, Miss Sass. Have a drink? Yes, thanks. You know, I'm very grateful for what you both did for me. Oh. My illustrious ancestors, thank you. Because you failed to join them today? <laughs> Score one for that. Well then, the eyes of Asia. After that, I really must go. Allow me. Imagine that you're back in Bassa for just one hour. Perhaps you were part of my lecture that you missed. Lunch in the street of the Lotus? In the street of the Lotus. I be of service. You might take me to lunch. Thin far. Thin far. You look charming. They're old, but I love to wear them. Oh, it's a different place. Tea and rice cake. I who will have to deliver the lecture. 
No one to blame but yourself. Being so lovely. Have you been here before? Lovely things end too soon. Please don't say that. Why? Because I want to see you again. Often. A little souvenir of our visit. A jade box? Oh, really, Mr. Cooper, it's much too expensive. Well, please take it. I insist that you have it. Thank you. Where well, shall we go? I don't like the idea of your associating with this Cooper fellow. It's nothing. Besides, I told you myself. I've heard very bad reports about him. I'm sorry. <laughs> These are unfortunate, seen for. It is not good for women to meddle. I humbly apologize, Your Highness. What have I done? with my enemies. I did not know. Cooper gave it to me. Cooper? Ira? I may go. Jump, jump. 
Hell, how? That's why I came from Manchuria. And searched until I found where he lived. I read that it was his last night in New York. I went to his place. I came through the French windows into his study and found him sitting in a chair. I accused him of the death of Sin Fa. And in answer, he raised his gun and I shot him. There is no question in my mind that it was I who killed him. I had every reason to, and I did. I was engaged to Ellen Croft, secretary to Kirk Norton, the famous financier. Floyd Cooper was trying to use her to get an introduction to Norton. And you know what an introduction to Norton could mean to a man like that. It was at the Maryland estate of Norton. Ellen and I were talking about our coming marriage. <laughs> Everybody happy. Everybody except Mr. Norton, I guess. Tell him this afternoon. I promised him I'd go to Timberline. Now, see here, young woman, you'll take dictation from me. That's old-fashioned. Well, I'll take dictation from you. Anything so long as we're married soon. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> I just came, miss. Oh, thanks. Mr. Norton will be ready for you in a few minutes. All right. Norton sending you flowers? Norton? Oh, you're not getting jealous again, Howard. Who then? Are you trying to play a joke on me? I'll bet your card's tucked away here someplace. Oh, here it is. But it says from Floyd Cooper. Begging your pardon, ma'am, for being so bold. Oh, thanks, Mr. Cooper. But I don't think... Well, just a bribe. Oh. Hello, Howard. What are you doing here? Miss Croft knows. I'm very sorry, Mr. Cooper, but your request is impossible. What's between you two? Oh, orchids. <laughs> A rare tropical plant. Also, they're parasites. Not bad, Drew. That's beside the point. What are you doing here? I don't see that that's any business of yours. Miss Croft and I are engaged. Congratulations. But I still don't see how my business can concern you. Mr. Cooper's here to see Mr. Norton about an interview. Don't do it. Oh, maybe you're on the same assignment. No, I'm not. And isn't it a bit unprofessional to use your influence to prevent me from getting my interview? If it's only an interview he wants. Mr. Nord never grants interviews. But he's leaving for Timberline, and if you'll call on him there, I'll see what can be done. Thank you. Well, let's call it the truth, Howard. We're not on the same assignment. I'm sorry. We'll forget the whole thing. Good afternoon. I'm sorry. Well, that's all right, Howard. I couldn't bear to see a fellow like Cooper talking to you. He does sound exciting. That's just his line. I infer from that, Howard, that Mr. Cooper's not strictly a moral man. No, cut it out, will you? I'll be away from Washington in a couple of days. You can resign your job and we'll announce our engagement. I'll see you at Timberline. Thanks. They're lovely. Some women were meant for orchids. I think it's about time for you to see Mr. Norden. You know, I'm rather sorry that you managed to arrange that appointment. But I thought you wanted it. Well, I did. But now I won't have any excuse left for staying on Timberline. Well, the lion is in his den. And I am condemned to enter. Too late to recall it. I've resigned from the lion service. Do you think that was wise? I think it was very wise. Burning all your bridges. Don't you approve of Howard? I approve of you. I think you're charming, beautiful, thoroughbred. And I don't like to see thoroughbreds hitched to plow horses. Uh, you mustn't keep Mr. Norton waiting. And you're a good newspaper man. News comes first. I see. 
So this is the press man who's taking my right arm away from me, huh? <laughs> no, Mr. Norton. It's another newspaper man. Now, that's her fault. <laughs> it's Mr. Cooper about the interview. Mr. Cooper, I don't grant interviews, but I'm breaking my rule at Miss Croft's personal request. If you'll come down to Putton Green, I'll talk with you. Thank you, sir. Well, what is it you want to interview me about? I want to know if you'll be interested in, uh, in this. This is not an interview. It was the only way I had of bringing the matter to your attention. How did you know I was interested in these affairs? Certain information I received in Manchuria. Smart of you to bring the interview about in this way. What's it worth to you? One hundred thousand dollars. Oh, there's another little matter. Another war contract? Oh, no. Just a favor. Oh, to the Balkans. I wouldn't be able to arrange anything through the diplomatic service, but uh, there's a peace commission setting out, financed by some quite well-meaning people. Well, even a semi-official capacity would uh, help. <laughs> Floyd Cooper on a peace commission. <laughs> Considered arranged. I'm glad it turned out so well for you. Thanks to you. It's an important mission. Oh, it's important, I guess. But I never would have undertaken it if I had thought it was best for me to go away. Why? You know why. Hello, Howard. Ellen, would you go inside? I want to see Cooper alone. Howard, you're making a mistake. The only mistake I made was not telling you the truth about Cooper. I might have known this would happen. Nothing has happened, Howard, except in your own imagination. He seems to be positively gifted that way. Howard! Come on, Ellen, let's get out of here. No. What? We're no longer engaged. Ellen, you, you don't mean that. Please go. Steady. Steady. That's why I asked you not to burn your bridges. I couldn't stay here. What you need, Ellen, is a new outlook on life. Travel. Forget. Travel? I was going to ask you, but I didn't think there was a chance in the world. But if ever a man needed the service of a clever woman to help him on a delicate mission, I need a secretary like you. Now, don't say no until you consider it. Yes, sir? Is Ellen Croft here? No, sir. I want to see Mr. Cooper, then. Who shall I say is calling, sir? Mr. Uh, Stevens of the press. Stevens of the press, sir. All right. Hello, Stevens. Hello, Cooper. Hope you've changed your manners with your name. You were always too good for me at that kind of stuff. Where's Ellen? If you want to make a scene, I'd better come along with you to my study. It'll be nice and private there. Well, what's on your mind? Are you taking Miss Croft to Europe with you tomorrow? Why not ask her? I'm asking you! Go ahead. This is a showdown, Cooper. This time, you're playing for limit stakes. I always have. But I don't see that you're holding any cards. I don't care if she did break her engagement to me. You're not going to add her to the collection that you've got scattered all around the world? The lady in question is not going with me. Unfortunately. Lucky for you. If it's true. And drop that insinuation of gunplay. You're talking right up my alley. I'm going out to check up what you say. If you're lying to me, I'll be back. How do you do, sir? 
Miss Ellen Croft in? Uh, no, she moved out with all her baggage. Told us that she sent her forwarding address from her new position. Thanks. You're welcome. Back again, Mrs. Stevens. Where's Cooper? The party got a bit uh, noisy and he's retired. He's not to be disturbed. Why don't you make yourself the home? And I know you. Sure. How's Cooper getting along with his new secretary? Wow. Say, would you buy me a little drink, please? Right from that little glass. Cooper! Cooper, open the door! Cooper was sitting in a chair. I demanded that he sail without Ellen. He raised a gun and, and I shot him. And I gave myself up. And you know the rest. This is not my name. You made a mistake. You made the mistake when you grabbed it. It belongs to truth. You lied, Krenvitz. You haven't proved anything. No. I'll show you the proof. Your first lie occurred almost at the beginning of your story. Never got further than London, where she is now. You thought it'd be a good idea to hitch your story onto Mackay. So you began to parallel the circumstances. And here on this cylinder, you will notice more live variations, which correspond to this point on the record. I was deeply in love with Miss Dean Farr, a beautiful girl of Western education. Purely an invention, this Chinese girl. She never existed. You wanted a girl in your story, of another country, 
whose faith at Cooper's hands would excite sympathy. Lies. Lies. Your whole story is a lie. Prentice, I've had a theory about this case all during your trial. But unfortunately, as I told the governor, I had no positive proof. Tonight, your own lies have convicted you. You were never a military attaché in Chang's court. You and Cooper represented munition companies and were in a deal together. Cooper stole the contract, came to New York. You followed him. And because he wouldn't give you your share, you murdered him. And now, we come to the method you used to convince these two men that they had killed Cooper in what they thought was an act of self-defense. After you and Cooper had fought and you had murdered him, before you had time to search for the money he had cheated you of, you heard a noise. You picked up the dead man and put him in a chair. You went to the French window, but just as you reached it, you saw a shadow. Then you crouched behind the chair. It was Howard Troon coming to demand the whereabouts of his sweetheart. When Troon made his demand, you raised Cooper's arm as if to fire. Trude shot in self-defense, believing that Cooper was threatening his life. After Trude had gone, you didn't try to get away because you wanted the money from Chang's war contract. So you went to the safe. But just as you got there, there was an interruption. You hurried behind the chair. This time, the intruder was Mackay. When he demanded the whereabouts of his wife, you repeated your first successful trick that would draw Mackay's fire. But even after Mackay had gone and the house was aroused, you still stayed because you wanted Cooper's money. When the police apprehended you, and you knew that two men had already confessed, you added your confession to theirs in the hope that in the resulting confusion, you might escape the penalty of the murder of Floyd Cooper. There's a girl for you, and one for you. <laughs> 